today I want to just go through um, a few areas on grounding and bonding for uh, the radio amateur. Now it's actually quite a minefield, I didn't appreciate just how involved this was going to be and I think it's quite uh, an area that you need to get right. So what I did was I purchased a book uh, from the Amateur Radio Society, I don't know if you can see it there, Grounding and Bonding for the Amateur Radio. Now I don't think it's a particularly expensive book, there's lots of information in it and um, it's well worth the read because if you don't get this right you're going to end up with some problems. So I've, uh, I've had this for a while, I've been looking through it and I've been deciding how I'm going to do this for my own uh, radio setup. So I'm going to show you what I've done. It's not the right way, it's not the wrong way, it's how I've decided to do it. So um, up on my loft I've got a series of um, antennas and in the loft space I've got some radio equipment. So I was trying to or wanting to minimize the amount of cabling that was coming down to ground level to get to my earthing point. So what I have decided to do is make a um, an earthing bar that I can fit up into my loft. Uh, so this is the end result of making the earthing bar. Um, I purchased uh, a length of flat, so it's copper flat bar. Um, it is, let's just have a quick look. If we take a quick measure with the vernier gauge. Okay, so it's 30 millimeters wide and it is and it's four millimeters thick this uh, I mean does weigh quite a bit so I received that in just one length of copper bar and then after thinking about it for some time I decided what I was going to do to suit my situation so you can see at the top here, if I just hold that closer to the camera, you can see that I've actually cut small sections off of the bar. Now I've got four of those and I'll explain what they're gonna do. So after I cut them, what I did was I literally just put them in the vise and then I bent them over so they're a, a right angled bracket. Now these um, I designed to mount um, lightning arresters on. So I've got a, um, a series of lightning arresters for uh, different different um, antennas. So you can see you've got the screw in the bottom there. I have had to purchase slightly longer screws but what's actually going to happen is we're going to take that off and undo the screw. And then if you can imagine that that is going to sit on there and the screw is going to go underneath and then you can run your antenna either side of the lightning arrestor surge protector. Okay. So I think I've actually got three that are in use so I've incorporated a spare one if I want to add anything later on. What I did underneath is I then fitted a series of studs which you can see there so I've got options to connect other devices to independently whether it be the radio itself or the radios um, just keeping my options open. In hindsight I do think it's, uh, it's too long um, and I could have made it shorter but this is what I've ended up with I've got room to put it um, the nuts and bolts are all stainless steel so uh, it's inside anyway but damp will make them or would have made them prone to rusting 
if they've not been stainless steel. So everything you see on here is stainless steel. I've got nylock nuts, uh, there's washers there. I've got a combination of split washers and washers there, stainless steel as well. So if you can imagine, this is gonna be mounted on the wall in my loft. Now, so that I can uh, get behind, if I need to use a spanner, I'll just show you what, I, what I've decided to do. Because you can purchase these things, but I thought it would be more fun to make one. So to give it the standoff from the wall, what I've actually done, I don't know if you can see that, I have purchased some doorstops, just common old garden doorstops. Um, these I got from Screw Fix. You get a packet of, uh, packet of 10. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them back to back, like so. And then if I just hold this up, I'm gonna put the screw in the wall through there. And that way you are going to have about a two inch standoff on the wall. Okay. Now the cables that I put onto these studs down at the bottom here, what I've actually done is I have purchased the crimping tool and I have purchased these crimps. So what's actually going to happen is I'm going to take off the first nut, which should be loose, like so. There we go. Pop the crimp on with an earth wire attached and then that can screw in. I will possibly put a split washer on that, but you can see um, how it's connected. And then one of these connections is going to run down from the loft. Uh, it's already in place, this cable. Uh, I brought it down the outside of the building. Um, I was doing some work in the summer on the little back courtyard we've got. And what I've actually done is I've driven an eight foot copper rod directly into the ground and that is all uh, connected up, ready to go. So this is really the final piece of the jigsaw. Now, I'll show you this when it's actually in place. It's an incredibly tight area that I've got to work in, so I won't be doing any video of that, but at least you can see, once it's all there, you can see what I have been trying to actually describe to you. So hopefully this is gonna be of some use to you. So um, yeah. We'll see you soon with the next part of this video. So here we are. The earth bar is now installed up in my loft. So this is it actually in situation. Uh, and uh, I wasn't joking when I said how small the area is. I'm crouched down on my knees. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what happens. So we've got all the cables coming through the fascia board of the um, well just the underside of the roof uh, the grey one is actually the rotator cable so that's actually going to get moved once I get the rotator installed and then you've got the other um, cables for the end vent, the disc cone and the yard antenna are underneath that so just so you're kind of understanding what's going on here we put the um, bracket on the wall now excuse me because this is really not that easy to show you and I'm probably blocking the light now. So there we go. If I do it that way, move the light around. Now that's how I've kept it off the wall. I don't know if you can see that. That's the um, door stops I was talking about. They're back to back. And then I think I put an 80 mil screw in to the wall. So I've got one, one at the bottom and then one right at the top, which you can just about see there. So what we've got, we've got the uh, lightning, um, arrestors mounted up so the top one oh as you can see so the, the lightning arrestor is sat on there um, I've got a very I bought some very slightly longer bolts to go into the bottom of the arrestor so it could accommodate um, through the 
three and a half four millimeter copper so that top one is the uh, for the disco net antenna for my scanner well it's SDR radio actually uh, the next one down is uh, from the Yagi antenna which is on my rotator and this one here is the uh, NFED um, antenna and uh, I'm quite an organized person you can see I've got them all labeled up there so these feeds on the left are the ones coming in directly from the antennas and the ones on the right are patch cables that are about they're probably about two meters long and they're going to go off onto my desk for the various radios going down from that um, if I start at the bottom you can see I have got two earth cables there um, what I have got, the bottom one, the very bottom one, um, earth cable to antennas. So that's the one coming in from the roof. Um, there's a box up there that connects all the antennas. I didn't want to run loads of the earth cables down uh, so that it was even more unsightly on the roof. So I've got a waterproof box up there and you've got all these cables going into there and then just this one cable coming down to the earth bar. So that just screws on there. The uh, cable above it, as you can read there, goes to the earth cable, uh, is the earth cable to the ground rod. And I'll show you that. That's the ground rod um, that is eight foot long. I've just driven into the ground. Then above this, I know it's totally overkill, but you've got three um, earth cables here. So if you follow those up, they go up to the bottom of the lightning arresters. Now, I know they're already screwed to the um, actual copper earthing bar, but I'm a kind of belt and braces man, so I covered that. Um, this one here, wherever we are, that one, that one actually goes to my network um, switch. I've got the option of other connections on the earth bar as you can see. So what I've actually done is I've connected the network switch to that and I dare say once I get the radio and other bits and pieces installed we're going to see other earth connections uh, fitted to the bar. Um, so that's it. I'm actually really pleased with it. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. This is my take on what I wanted to do because I've seen some ones of these that are very messy and I think we've got enough wires running down the outside of the roof without running them down to the ground and then um, well just looking really unsightly so I've tried to make it as tidy as I can so all I actually have is one earth wire the bottom no the second one up there just running down to the ground um, the ground rod so I'll take you downstairs and I'll show you just how that's terminated so very unexciting um, the earth wire I was just pointing out up in my loft literally just comes down the outside of the building and then it just connects on to this earth rod uh, that was a two section earth rod um, you purchase a joining clip so what you actually do is get like a screwing nut to um, cover over the thread that then allowed you to bang with a hammer or whatever your chosen method is you can bung, uh, bang the first um, four foot of the rod into the ground you then take that uh, cap off which means that the thread is still in perfect condition you then put a joiner on which is screwed on and then you join the second four foot rod to the top of that joiner and then you don't have to but what you can do is put that nut on the final piece so that you're not ruining the screw thread of the last piece of four foot and then you just put um, well just screw the copper um, don't know what you call that copper fixing I can't think of the proper word and then uh, just fix your earth um, strap into that 
um, and that also I believe goes into the electric box as well so I hope I've got every angle covered um, we'll see what it works like now